next week, not this weekend, this Friday, uh, PFL is back in New York City. Uh, next week, though, we have the return of Shane Burgos. Uh, he is going up against Clay Collard in a very fun playoff fight. And obviously, uh, last time we saw him in action, he had a win that was in late June. All kinds of drama surrounding that fight. Hurricane Shane, kind enough to join us right now on the program. Let us say hello to Shane Burgos. Hello, Shane. How are you? How's it going, bro? I'm good. Uh, great to have you back on. Uh, congrats on picking up your first PFL win uh, back in, in June. There was a lot of drama surrounding that win. Nothing that any, like, had to do with you, but holy smokes. Yeah. Did, did you feel like all that stuff took away from the performance, took away from the fight? I mean, it literally had nothing to do. You benefited from it, but it, you know, it, it really had nothing to do with your actions. How did you feel about the aftermath of it all? Yeah, so it was definitely, it was weird, man. Like I, I won the fight and I was like, obviously happy you win the fight because at the end of the day winning the fight is the most important thing so happy i won the fight but i was like damn i'm bummed out and i'm obviously out of the out of the fucking playoffs so that that sucked um i get but i didn't even actually go to sleep so I, I was having my my third daughter she was due any day now so i had to get my ass back home so i got on a plane at like 5 a.m that morning didn't even go to sleep i land and then my pt i get obviously no service he's like shane I'm like what's up he said a couple rows back he's like did you did you, did you check your phone i'm like no nah, i have no service he's like check your phone. I'm like, I'm trying. He's like, you catch. He throws me his phone and I'm like, what the fuck? All right. This is obviously fake. I'm looking at him. I'm like, Oh shit. MMA fighting post. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, and then my phone, then I get service and I see just blowing up. I'm like, Holy shit. What is going, what is going on? Completely wow. took me by surprise. We're a of an experience. Yeah. So you had no idea when you were in Atlanta, when you were at the arena, at any point, even uh, after the, like you, you landed right, back on it thinking that you were out. Yes, honest to God, I know people think that I thought that I knew about it beforehand. Honest to God, I had no clue. I even told my wife, I was like, "I'm so bummed." I was like, "But you know, we're having the baby. At least I'll be able to just focus on just being a dad for the next couple months. Like, we'll be able to just put focus on that." I land and I, I, I send her that right away. I'm like, "Remember everything I said last night? Never mind. I'm back in." So um, during that brief period, a few hours, where you actually thought that your your first year with PFL would you know, last those two fights and you were out. How are you feeling? Like this, this has been some, you know, we've seen this with, with Pettis and, yeah. and Roy where the, the UFC star comes over and doesn't quite, you know, live up to the hype or whatever. How are you feeling about what you had done and how it was all ending at least for that moment? So I was obviously bummed not making it to the playoffs, but I was happy that I won the fight. But then it was also like a, I was like, you know what, maybe I'll be able to get like a one-off fight in the finale. And so I was like, I knew my, I know my year's not done. I was like, I'm obviously not going to be fighting in August, but that finale card, I think they'll, they'll want to put me on it, especially if they put it in New York like they did the last couple of years. So I was like, I'm just going to focus on that and, and, and stay as optimistic as I can. I mean, obviously I'm coming off a win, so it's easier to be optimistic than when you're coming off a loss. So it was definitely a, it was a bittersweet feeling. And then, um, but being in, even in this position is kind of like a bittersweet because it's not, not I, don't, I don't know if I'll call it bittersweet. It's definitely sweet being where I'm at. But uh, with, like you said, with all that controversy like that, I had nothing to do with. It kind of is like, uh, puts me in a weird position where everyone's like, Oh, he's, he's not even supposed to be there. And he's there. And like, it, people think they're playing favoritism or anything like that. Like, and I keep using this uh, scenario, like had my last opponent, Yamato, had he knocked me the fuck out in the third round, he still wouldn't have an, had enough points. Right. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you don't think the PFL would have gave him the opportunity. Had he knocked Shane mm -hmm. Burgos out, like out cold in the third round. And they, I think, I think no matter if it was me or if it was him winning, they, they would have done what they did. Uh, that performance against Yamato, how did you feel about it? How did you feel about what you did in there? You got the win, decision yeah. win. How did you feel about your performance? I'm pissed I didn't, I didn't get the finish on, um, but it was it was such a weird fight. It was really really weird fight. Uh, the kid's super tough, man. He's got a chin and a half. I hit him with some hard shots with, with, with the ground and I was surprised he didn't go out honestly. But uh, it was weird how um, when he fought Clay, he was more active off his back, trying to get up and throwing up submissions. When he fought me, he didn't really throw up any submissions or try to get up. And my game plan was, I was thinking that the taking the path of uh, the path of least resistance. And I thought I knew I had, I had a big uh, grappling advantage. I, I, I could just see it. So I knew if I took him down, I'd be able to get a submission, but he never gave me the opportunity to get the submission because he kind of just was content staying in the guard. So that took me by surprise. I really wasn't expecting that. I was expecting him to, to show more urgency to try to get up or look for a submission and then me to exploit that and, and get his back and be able to choke him out. Uh, after that, and before you found out that you're going to the playoffs, did you consider dropping down back to 145? Did you think that the size played a factor uh, in any, you know, of those uh, two? No, nothing like that. Okay. No, no, no. no. That, 
I, I could bro, <laughs> I could not do 45. Like me doing 55, this is my third time in a row in the, in the last what four months or something like that. I can't imagine doing this at 45 three times in a row. Dude, it would it would just destroy my body. Okay. All right. So I, I was just wondering if you thought that the size um played a factor yeah. in any of the performance. I mean, it looked like OAM was a little bit bigger than you out there. Yeah. But yeah, he he was definitely he was definitely bigger than me. But that was my first fight at 55. Um, this is not now my third fight. And my last fight, I was about five pounds heavier than my first one. My my first one was my first time at 55, and I got way too low, way too quick. It was such an easy weight cut that I was like, in the back of my mind, I was kind of worried about it because I was like, dude, I'm not gonna rehydrate to that that big. Like I'm gonna go back into the cage. So for for that fight when I fought OAM, I weighed the same as when I fought Josh M at 145. Wow. And what is yeah. that? I was I was 174 pounds. Damn. Okay. You you weighed 174 for a featherweight fight? Yeah, yes, yes. Holy crap. How did you add that much? Yeah. That's almost 30 pounds. Yeah, it it was it was I ate a little bit too much that time. <laughs> okay. That was that That's was a little not, too much. You don't want to add that much, right? No, I, I, I didn't want to get to 74. That wasn't the plan. I wanted to be around 170. That, that was, that was the plan, but it looked too okay. much this time. So you said that, uh, when you landed, you, you, you saw on your, your, your buddy's phone, like, how did you actually find out that you were officially in? Did someone call you? Like, yeah, yeah. My manager, so my mouth, called me, my manager called me and then he's like, oh, dude, you're in. And I was like, D- I'm, I'm thinking like, I'm going into full dad mode. I'm like, all right, I just yeah. want to fight. All right. Pocket some money. I'm gonna just kick back for the summer, enjoy it with my with my family, with my wife, my kids, my new baby coming. And then I land, and I'm like, all right, everything I said from to my wife, I'm like, uh, never mind, because we're right back into camp again. <laughs> we have nine and a half weeks, so it it was it completely uh the the emo- like an emotional roller coaster, honestly. So PFL's decision to put you in and to take Natan out was heavily criticized. How do you feel? Like, obviously, you benefited from it, but if you can sort of remove yourself from the equation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, do you yeah. feel like they had a point? Do you feel like it was the right call? So, yes and no. So, it's a it's a shit position to be in. Like, I I 100% feel for those guys. I've said it before. Like, he's his one of them is the godfather of the other one's daughter. They're best yeah. friends. I'm like, that sounds like a terrible position to be in. I can't fault them for fighting the way that they fought. I, I one part of me understands why they did that. Like, I can't imagine going in there with like basically a brother to me and, and, and trying to knock his fucking head off and trying to crush his dreams. That's gotta be rough. And I saw those guys backstage after, and they were both distraught because it was, it, they felt bad that they had to fight each other. And I, and I, and I feel for them. That's a hundred percent a shit position to be in. So I can't judge the way they fought, but then putting myself in the PFL shoes, I understand why they made that decision because it's, it's a league. It's a professional league. You got, you got people betting on the fights. I mean, like if you bet on that fight, you kind of got to avoid that, Avoid that bet. I mean, it puts the PFL in a really weird position. But that's why I keep saying it, it had. I don't think it had anything to do with me per se. I think, like I said, had Yamato knocked me out, I think they would have yeah. given him the opportunity as well. The crazy thing about it is, like, you were their big free agent signing, and since you benefited from it, people started to look at it yeah, a yes. little bit suspiciously. Exactly. That's why. That, that's why I'm like, damn, man. Like, it, if it was anyone else, no one would say anything. But it, it's me now. It looks like they're playing favoritism. I'm like that kind of fucking falls on me like it's it's i didn't it's not my fault you yeah. know what i mean like I, I, I listen i was given this opportunity and all i can do is make the absolute most out of it and that's exactly sure. what i'm doing i don't think anyone should begrudge you or, or fault you you're just taking the opportunity and running with it um they could look at those two guys and the way in which they fought and the pfl's decision to me you're just the guy who is is there and got the call and any fighter would take that I know you were preparing for your exactly. fight because because yours came on afterwards but did you see their fight while yeah. you were in the locker room and did you think something was off or are you too much in the zone yeah. where you're not really paying attention? No, no I, I, they, they fought before I even started warming up. So I was, I was sitting back there, back there watching and I could tell and I was like, yeah, I was like, this is, I right off the bat. I was like, all right, that's, that's how it's going to be because they're, they're, they're obviously super close. So I was like, all right, I don't see it going. I, it's clearly going to go to the decision. They clearly don't want to hurt each other. And again, I'm not judging because again, I've never been in that position before. So I was like, yeah, I, I can see what, how this is going. It was very strange. So it, it, like, even calling it a sparring match isn't really fair because at least in sparring, you're yeah. you're kind of going yeah. all out. Here, it just felt like you know they were just going for like a light sort of like feeling out process, right? Like just just to get the body moving. Like it felt like there was yeah. no bad intentions that, in anything that was being thrown. More more of a grappling match it looked like because they they looked like they were grappling. They, the wrestling exchanges and, and, that, and the grappling exchanges those looked like they were they were harder. The strikes, obviously, I think they only landed a 
handful of strikes between the both of them. So, I, but again, like I said, as soon as it started and they started fighting like that, I, like, I can see how it's going. Uh, I feel for those guys, it's a shit situation to be in, but I'm, I, I, I'm just the person who uh, got granted this opportunity. And so, like you said, uh, now this is your third fight and, and you're fighting next Wednesday. So a week from today, since April, uh, and, and you're, thank God you're fighting at 55, not 45, but this is a lot of activity in the span yeah. of what, four months. How is your body feeling? I'm at PT right now. I literally just finished up with, with, with a PT session, but that's not to say that I'm hurting. It's just, I, I do, I do PT regularly just to maintain, but Honestly, I didn't know how my body would hold up, and I'm surprised that I think 55 has been monumental. I wouldn't have been able to do this at 45. My body would just be destroyed, but I, I'm feeling pretty damn good. I think this one, I actually feel good, better than my last two, honestly. Really? Why is that? Yeah. Any particular reason? I my After my, my first fight OAM, I didn't take a break. I literally jumped right back because I lost the fight, so I was just pissed, and I literally jumped right back into training a couple days after and just went right into the next camp. After my second fight, I was like, let me actually take a break. Because I was like 14 weeks of straight training where I was like, I need a physical and mental break. So I took an actual week off where I didn't do anything for a week. And I came back and I was like, I actually feel great right now. I tapered my 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 second week. So I went light. And then my third week started picking it up. So I, I did it a lot smarter, I'd say. Because you don't really know what to expect. Like, you, you think you know what to expect on paper with the season format. But you don't know what to expect until you're actually in it. So it's kind of like I'm learning on the go from the first fight, second fight to the third fight now. So now my third fight, I feel like I, I was able to get my footing in and see how, how this is going to play out. So the stuff that people have said about, you know, the format being tougher than it seems, some of the UFC veterans talking about this, all legit, you could back that up? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's 100%. Could, everybody knows this, this is a mental sport, man. This is a mental sport, but the season format is even more mental. It, it really fucking is. You're not really getting a break, and then you're – going fight camp to fight camp, but it's not just a fight camp and you're going fight uh weight cut to weight cut to weight cut. And even though I'm fighting at 55, it's, it's not as hard at four as 45, but it's still not an easy weight cut at all. Like I still have to count my macros and stuff, the way everything I'm eating. Um, and that's just mentally taxing. And I mean, like having to constantly be, be in a diet, it's fucking annoying. I, I hate, I fucking hate cutting weight. And I can't tell, can't tell you like everybody talks about Patty Pimblett and like his eating disorder. It's a hundred percent legit. I a hundred percent have an eating disorder. Like, Dude, after after a fight, it's like I, I have like two days where I can eat like crazy, and I'm eating to the point where I'm like in pain, in pain, where I like bad sick, dude. It's bad. I went to the I went to the buffet at Caesar's Palace after the OM fight, and I, I, I they had they had, they had the, the fighter buffet like backstage after the fight. So I went and I ate a bunch of bunch of sh shitty food. I was like, damn, we had this fucking Caesar's palace uh, reservation and it's like a hundred bucks a person. I was like, I, I gotta get my money's worth. So I'm definitely eating again. So I, <laughs> I was like, I'll be hungry again in an hour. I, I got to the buffet and I was like, dude, I'm not hungry at all, but it looks amazing. I'm trying everything. I couldn't, I almost needed a wheelchair to get back to my car. Wow. It was, it, I was in pain. Yeah. So like the eating disorder shit, it, it's only getting amplified now at this point. <laughs> What's your biggest vice? Food wise, sweets, sweets. I, dude, I got a huge sweet tooth. Huge sweet tooth. It's bad. So, like, what in particular? Ice cream, chocolate, ice cream. Candy, I, ice, I, cream. I, ice cream, but I don't discriminate. I love, like, I love cookies, man. I love, I love cheesecake. Oh, it, uh, I can't even give you one thing. Brownie sundaes. Yeah. Is there one go to after a big win, like something that you have to have to celebrate? Yeah, brownie sundae. Like a hot, a hot brownie with, with, with ice cream on top. But uh, but I also oh, want like a nice Jesus. fat cheeseburger with bacon and like salty french fries, crispy salty french oh, fries. <laughs> You're making me yeah. starving right now too. Yeah. Uh, this is tremendous. Uh, is, is, the, uh, is the dream win next Wednesday and then meet OAM again? Is that is that what you're hoping for? 100%, man. The stars are aligned. Like this next one's being in, in, at MSG. I'm like, come on. That's perfect. And then... Yeah. And then he, he's the favorite for his next fight. I think he should win that fight. It's not an easy fight, but he should win that fight. And then me and him in the finals, that's the storybook ending right there. Win the championship, yeah. get avenge that loss. And I, I don't know where the, that finale is going to be. I mean, if it's in New York, that'd be fucking great. Finale card again in New York, that'd be, I'd sell the place out. So yeah, that'd be awesome. How many people are you expecting next Wednesday for you? We, we'll be able to see exactly how many people because they use the the, the code to, to buy tickets. I don't know what, what it's at now, but it's going to be, I oh honestly, I'm going to say well over 150 people. Wow. Just for you. Yeah. Just the one. Yeah. You should yeah. get a cut yeah. of that. I, like, I, I, 
I have a huge, I have a huge team. So I have a lot of training yeah. partners coming, a lot of people coming in. Yeah. I remember, uh, I think it was the event at Nassau Coliseum back in the day. There was yeah. one event where it just felt like half yeah. the arena was your team. Yeah. You know what I'm talking that about? That was it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that it was, was me, it. Jimmy and Lyman fought. Yeah. And then we had like the whole parking lot was put with, they were like, Oh, doing a uh, tailgate and everything like that. That was, that yeah, was yeah, yeah, that's exactly. one of my favorite fights. Yeah. That's when I fought Pepe. That was one of my favorite fights ever. Uh, what do you make of these uh, these rumors of PFL buying Bellator? Would you like that? Hell yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. That's more competition, and then I don't know how the I think the season will be different if that happens because you can't have a like you kind of got to earn your way into the season. I feel like which would yeah. be fun. You would have more regular, um, I guess, off season fights, and then the guys that win those off season fights would get put into the season. So I think that that opens up a lot more uh, opportunities too. My my idea was every division. Let's say there's eight fighters or ten fighters in the in the weight class. Let's say fifty five. You have five or four PFL fighters going up against five or four Bellator fighters, and so then there's bragging rights of like PFL versus Bellator, and they're representing oh, their. You know what I mean? And then you see who <laughs> no, at the that, end that, gets more belts. <laughs> that's like WCW versus WWE back in the day. Yes, that, that, that's, that's exactly actually, it. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> the I, invasion. I didn't even think of that. That's it. That's a great, that's a great idea. <laughs> they need to NWO play that up. The invasion. Like, yes, yes. Yeah, play it up. Tell yeah. Peter Murray. You can, you can run with yeah, that. NWO versus, yeah, remember that? I will. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Those were good old days, man. Those were the good old days. Um, looking yeah. forward to your return. Good luck, Shane. Thank you so much. Uh, don't sweat, you know, the haters and shit like that that are uh, trying to, to pin this all on you. You're just benefiting from it and, and, and doing so yeah. in a big way. So good luck next Wednesday. Looking forward to it. Thanks for coming on as always. Appreciate you, brother. Have a good one, all right? All right, there he is. Hurricane Shane Burgos. What a crazy story that was. Um, didn't get a whole lot of time to get right into it there because he was uh, standing by, but uh, that was the one where Natan Schultz and uh, Hausch Manfio were fighting. They were friends. They didn't really want to fight each other, and it just looked, I mean, grappling match, it just looked like two friends, you know, feeling each other out. And uh, the next morning... Uh, this was back in late June. The next morning, PFL said that you know essentially they 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 weren't competing in the uh, the spirit of competition, and uh, Natan ended up winning the fight via decision. But they pulled him from it, and as a result, the next man up was big free agent signing Hurricane Shane Burgos, and so he benefited from it. Uh, a lot of people thought they made that decision so they could um, they could put Shane in that spot. Um, but to his point, you know. Had he lost, he would like to think, and I would like to think as well, that they would have put Yamato Nishikawa in that spot as well. Um, it just was a bad look. And I don't know how they avoid this in the future. I don't know how they, they. I mean, they just, ultimately, like they have to know who's going to be matched up with who. Um, but the fighters as well should probably speak up. If they're not going to fight, you know, and, 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 and keep the sanctity of the sport alive and well, uh, that's a problem as well because it's just a bad look for everyone. So uh, interesting uh, little stumbling block, roadblock incident that they had to overcome. Uh, feels like most people have gotten over it at this point. Maybe not in a ton. I know he uh, he asked Francis Ngannou to to speak up on his behalf. So let's see what happens here and how they deal with these situations in, in the future. But for now, uh, Clay Collard is next for... Uh, Shane Burgos and uh, OAM is also on that card going up against Bruno Miranda. Right now, Burgos Collard is the main event and OAM Bruno Miranda, which is interesting since uh, OAM is the defending champion, is the co-main event. That's next Wednesday, August the 23rd at the theater at Madison Square Garden.